Good morning, everybody. What is this voice? Good morning, everybody. Honorable Justice Pankaj Mittal Ji, our able administrator, vice chairman, Sunit Ji, our taskmaster, eh? our dean, Rashmi Salpekar Ji, Lebned participants, my esteemed colleagues, and my wonderful students. It is my pleasure and also privilege to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Now few words about our chief guest. Honorable Justice Pankaj Mittal has an exemplary and illustrious growth in the ladder of his career. You know that I won't speak lies. Whatever I speak it is perfect truth, nothing but truth. And then he has very strong educational background. When you say he is he has now reached to the stage of judge of Supreme Court, you must be thinking that very strong educational background must be from law only. We are also law graduates. At that time, when we were students, the people used to enter into law college because they cannot be anywhere else. But his position was different. It was a matter of choice. There is a reason behind it. He belongs to the family of three generational lawyers and two generations of judges. So it can be only that one in the ladder of his educational aspects. He has reached appropriate level in legal education, my dear friends. That is what I would like to say. It is not an accidental entry. It is by choice he has come. And then, the same background has paved the way for his judicial acumen and alacrity. When I am saying this, it is not for rhythmic rhetoric. It is true. If you see his judgments, this is not the proper place to examine his judgments and are critically doing all those things, you will find that he was a major judgment writer. Which is a rare phenomenon, not simply rather sitting on the bench and other colleague writing in consultation with him. It is not like that. He is a major judgment writer. Number one, he has perfect judicial craftsmanship. My dear friend, judicial craftsmanship is different from a judge being an activist or a dynamic judge or a judge in the habit of overreach. It is not like that. He has perfect. He learnt the art of judgment writing. When we have taken him to the library, the first book he has seen from the rack, racks on the research side, is that book. And he learnt judgment writing. So, technically, Wonderful judicial craftsmanship, we can see. And then, his gumption in writing the judgment, clarity that is there. When I am saying all these things, you may be thinking how we know all these things. 
friends i tell you this is not the occasion wherein i can critically talk about several things but the thing is that i myself i am a biographer of judicial tendencies judging the justices was my major research project sponsored by ugc and that my book on kokasubaro justice kokasubaro not for name sake not because he belongs to my area i wrote that because he was a controversial judge we we'll have to agree at that time so based upon that parameters when we see we are very confident that wonderful judgments are going to come from him he is a prolific writer also that is another angle in him that may not be that much important for a judge because judicial language is itself is different so it is a wonderful opportunity to have him here i extend on behalf of the management on behalf of our colleagues and participants a warm welcome to you sir and then let me congratulate first the organizers of this seminar for choosing a wonderful topic why i am saying this recently g20 declaration you have seen is it not in that declaration prominent place was given to the declaration relating to the regulating artificial intelligence am i correct nobody says yes or no what is this and then my dear friends india is going to rather host many conferences of course and we are good at it and another important one go global participate partnership of artificial intelligence gpai and summit also it is going to take up the first meeting may be immediately even in the month of october or november and subsequently you will have the summit as well so in that context our contribution is a wonderful contribution to that extent and yet another thing my dear friends look at artificial intelligence can you generally have the legal implications only in law of torts or existing laws that is impossible my dear friends we require separate international legal regime as well as domestic regime governing artificial intelligence that is the purpose of this particular seminar my dear friends the vice chairman of artificial intelligence program he is president of microsoft i think brad smith has clearly pointed out that he is not telling anything about other countries he was specifically telling he has written an article with reference to india and he said india should guard itself by having rails that are required to face the implications of artificial intelligence it is he is not an indian and microsoft president he was telling that we must have because india is growing country it has wonderfully participated in all these things and nearly 10% of gdp in coming years is to be contributed through artificial intelligence so so many things are there that is why there is an important aspect that india should have its own 
things. Other European Union or some other countries, they have already some regulatory mechanism and nothing is working, my dear friends, to rather full extent. And then most vulnerable people for this negative implications, leaving alone positive implications, will be youth and the children. You will find misinformation, radicalization, cyberbullying, this word we will be hearing always, sexual grooming or doxing, all these things, they are inherent dangers which have to be controlled at appropriate time. Otherwise, the future will be bleak. One thing is that, my dear friends, recently, if you can see, I ask my students always to utilize the resources in the library. Modern Law Review is there, 2023, has published a wonderful article and which says that lens of indirect discrimination always focuses on the artificial intelligence missionary which is based upon, as we know, if any technical person is there, they will tell, we are zero in that aspect. Algorithms. Algorithm system. Algorithm system basically discriminatory. This is not our statement, even the scientists say. And then they also say about what is known as ADMs. That means algorithm decision making. So our government or any government in the world, they want to resolve certain complicated and complex issues through ADMs and there are dangers in it which we will have to control. We cannot stop A. Even if you want to stop it, it is not possible, you cannot stop it. So when you cannot stop it, you try to regulate it. That is what is required. My dear friends, I tell you that LLM means for us master degree in law. But for chat GPT, this language is different. LLM, that is another aspect of it, as I have told you, there are number of things, if I start talking, she will send sleep after some time. Our dean will send a sleep, sir, time is up, sir. So, before I receive a warning sleep from her, let me conclude, as of now, the governments are using AI only for formal decision making which doesn't require any discretion or any moral aspect. Ethicality is a wonderful thing that has to be taken care of. When there is a discretion, moral and ethical considerations will be there. Once you say it is ethical consideration, legal implications will be there. Human rights implications will be there. And so many copyright issues is only one, my dear friends. Chat GPT is rather prohibited in some countries already. Recently, even our neighboring department must have another seminar that five newspaper concerns, famous ones, including, what is that, New York Times or something like that, they have also stated very clearly that we are stopping extraction of their material by chart GPT. They did not want to share. So, my dear friends, taking into account the negative and positive implications of artificial intelligence, this seminar should contribute a lot and get name and fame for us. Thank you very much.